Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Artcasters number 142. And I'm here with, that doesn't look like Josh. I don't see the beard or the little vaping device. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's about uh, faith and mental illness. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so Josh isn't here tonight, kind of had like a last minute thing. He had to bail uh, like a personal thing, but he did want everyone to know that it's nothing disastrous, but something he had to take care of. So, so uh, as usual, Corey stepped up and is, is filling in for us last minute, like always. Da, 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 da. <laughs> so, hey, Corey, what, what, are you, what have you been up to? Uh, just uh, finished up my book. Um, so I'm talking with literary agents and got some good responses and some mediocre responses. Uh, and then I'm getting ready for a Comic-Con. My first uh, tabling experience in, I think about three weeks, two, three or four weeks. Yeah. So sooner than it should be for the amount of preparation I have. But that's, okay. That's okay. Well, about. our guest tonight has some Comic-Con experience. Actually, that's where I met him. <laughs> Um, so we'll probably we, we might get into that a little more, but we've got a main topic we want to we want to touch base on first. But so our guest tonight is Sean Sauter. Hey, Sean, how's it going? It's going well, man. Very well. Definitely smiling here. Awesome, awesome. So uh, because it's your first time on the show, do you want to? You know what? <laughs> I got to go. Back. I got to go back to Corey real quick because we forgot to, for him to throw out his URL and where everyone can find him. <laughs> oh yeah, you can you can find me at coreykerr.com. That's c o r y k e r r dot com, um, and that has everything else. And if you just Google my name, uh, I, I kind of come up. So okay, and you can find me on here, right here on my channel, Cirkworks uh, on YouTube, Cirkworks dot com, all that stuff. So Sean, uh, we want you to tell everyone who you are and what you do and all that kind of stuff. But first, uh, let everyone know kind of where they can find you online. Uh, you can find me on my main website, uh, seansauter.com. That's S-E-A-N-S-A-U-T-T-E-R. I'm also on uh, Instagram, Facebook, the Twitter, you know. Um, and, and I've also got my uh, the, the webcomic on the, the tapas. And uh, I think that's the word, tapas. I, uh, as far and, as I know. <laughs> uh, Webtoons, too. And then also on YouTube. And yeah. yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So, and we'll have, we'll have links to Sean's website in the description of this video. Um, so obviously you uh, do a web comic. Do you want to kind of let everyone know what the web comic's about? Yes. Yes, man. Uh, the web comic is about a little boy. His name is Shawnee Poo. It kind of, it, it gets taken from my name when I grew up. That, that was my name, little Shawnee Poo. And so <laughs> it's, it's Shawnee Poo's adventures, uh, with his best friend, Fuji the robot. It's their adventures going through elementary school, having fun with the neighborhood friends, and then also playing pranks on Shawnee Poo's big old lovable dad. <laughs> yeah, I've seen, and, and the artwork is great. It's, it's, I, I've got to, I have to check out, I've got like uh, a print of one of the comic strips that, that I got from you at the show, but um, I'll have to, I'm going to have to check it out online because I've only actually seen the one, the one strip, but yeah. Uh, but uh, so the main thing we want to talk about today, the the thing that you're doing is um, uh, you're you're you've, I don't know if you did you develop this course you t you teach a course and you do it in like a, a basically uh, like a, a comic uh, comic book store setup yes so you go in there and you're teaching but you're teaching the kids and the the and just last week we had a show the topic of the show last week was mentoring. So we, we talked about that, but this is a little different, and it's something that I think is really important, especially when it comes to comic books, because it seems like so, I mean, so many people are focusing on sort of us old guys as far as like me, I guess you guys are a lot younger than me, I'm assuming. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, kind of that crowd that's, you know, it seems like they're focusing on this older crowd, and I just think it's super important to get younger kids into comics, because... I mean, we're competing with like video games and streaming and all this other stuff. And uh, I think it's really important to get kids into comics and get, you know, and, you know, teach them how to draw, do all that kind of stuff. Um, but that's kind of what you're doing. So um, I don't know if you want to talk about kind of how this whole thing came to be. Um, did you 
were you brought in by the comic book stores? Did you approach them? How, how did that all work out? What, what it all started was, was this. Um, it was pretty much going through like hard, hard life lessons. And uh, I mean, my, my story is um, I had no direction in life when, when, when I was growing up. Um, I always knew that I loved to draw, but I never knew, I never took the time to figure out what I could do with it. Um, how to, you know, how to make the dream actually to a reality. And so um, I ended up spent, spending most of my life not pursuing these dreams. I had dreams. In fact, I, I had sometimes too many of them. Um, I can tell you from experience that having dreams and not working towards them, it just, it'll just eventually just catch up to you. And uh, that's what ended up happening to me. It, it caught up to me. Uh, the day job was sucking me dry. The medical bills were piling up and uh, the credit card cr credit cards were, you know, maxed out. And at that, at that point, I kind of stopped caring, stopped caring about life. Uh, uh, I started to feel cold and not motivated and, and nothing is worse than honestly forgetting how to smile, like going day by day and just, you know, just feeling that emptiness. And, uh, <clears throat> It actually took me hitting rock bottom before my eyes began to open. Um, uh, one of the first things that I did for my family and I was, okay, we need to get on a budget. We need to pay off our debt. We need to get over these medical bills. We need to stop you know, doing the American thing or just swipe the credit card. And uh, it took us about a year, but we, Paid off a credit card, life started getting back on track. It, it was so great. In fact, uh, around uh, Valentine's Day, 2015, my my mother and father uh, got remarried. Wow, they, that's cool. Yeah, they got remarried. Uh, they, you know, they. Now, wait, I, no, I, hold on. They, so it's not just a renewing their vows. I'm assuming they were divorced and they got remarried. Yeah, they got divorced while I was in uh, junior high. Um, in high school around that time. And uh, I mean, my dad, he never stopped loving my mom. I mean, to, he was constantly re-asking, please, please just remarry me. And uh, my mom had her, her whole hangups and stuff. She didn't feel that she was worthy of, you know, his love and, you know, being married to him. But yeah, they, they ended up getting remarried and, uh, uh, unfortunately, the very next day, a uh, tragedy happened. And uh, that's where uh, that morning I received a phone call that in the middle of the night, my dad had passed away. Oh, my God. And, I mean, it wasn't too much of a surprise. I mean, his health wasn't that great. He didn't properly take care of himself for the last decade of his life. And uh, it caught up. And... I mean, I don't know for, for you guys, but I mean, losing my dad, it, it was the biggest sock to the, to the stomach, you know, it just took everything out of me. It, I mean, if I felt like I had no direction, but you know, before I, then I just felt completely lost in life. Like my, my, my papa bear, my dad, the guy that would always have a joke, would always make me laugh and would always be there to to guide me was uh no longer there and so it, it there was another you know mountain to climb i needed to get over that and i was taking a good hard look at how my life was uh, i wasn't happy where i was working i was miserable and in fact i encourage anybody out there if you're if you're at a job or or something that's just taking more away then what you're getting out of it, no job is worth, you know, your own, your own, uh, well-being. And I encourage you figure out a way. And in fact, go see a, a counselor, a shrink. Uh, don't think that, uh, just because people give them a, a bad rap that there aren't 
people that can help, they, they can help. I, I definitely encourage that. And that's what got me on this was hitting rock bottom and noticing all the potholes that I stepped in. And most of these potholes were from my own self because I didn't have self-worth. I didn't believe in myself. And that's what I want to change. Uh, I look at the, the kids, they, they're the future. My own children, I encourage them each and every day, read as much as you can, learn as much as you can. The more that you know, the, the, the further that you can go. And uh, that's, that's, I just feel like I'm on this, uh, this crusade to, 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 change, to change my neighborhood, to change my state. Um, I know, Scott, we, we talked uh, at the convention about, you know, uh, the Wallace and Ladmo program and what it meant to me. And it, it's something that I feel that our state, shoot, even our, our world, you know, our planet could use more of, more smiles, um, more understanding. And also, just like, um, just like all of us. I think there's always something to learn each and every day. And even if it's something that we've already learned, just like the golden rule, the golden rule, treat others the way that you want to be treated. Every time I, I start my classes, I always, that is my, my only rule for class. Treat everyone the way you want to be treated. And uh, it, it, could you imagine if we had a world where we were all more considerate, more understanding and, and more helpful and I, I, that that's that's where it is. It's I'm just don't want to see a kid, any child, go through my experiences. I don't want them to feel alone. I don't want them to feel hopeless, helpless, and uh, most importantly, I don't want them to go throughout a day and not smile. Uh, I feel like smiles are definitely a very powerful thing to have in life, uh, especially when you just believe. When you just take a deep breath, realize that everything is okay, and then just smile and just go on, go on to the next step. And uh, that, that's ultimately all that, that whole story. That's what's led me up to this. And I'm, I'm so blessed and thankful for it. That's, I mean, that, and that's awesome. And I, I actually, I had no idea about that. I, I know you had mentioned that your, your father had passed away and because he's a big part of your, your comic strip and everything. Um, yeah. But yeah, I never knew that story. Because at first, at first when you had mentioned about them getting back together before it kind of the, unfortunately the, the story kind of took a turn. Yeah. Um, cause I was, I was thinking about my parents cause that was kind of like after my parents got divorced, it was kind of like a, that, that weird fantasy that they get back together and they, you know, never did. But it's weird because they're like almost like like really good friends now. Now, whenever there's a party or something, they're together. They're just like really good friends. But I don't, I don't have any delusions they'll ever get back together just because they're they're way too different. But yeah. that is that is yeah. So there's that. But the but the one thing I wanted to say just because I I, I kind of had no idea what kind of sparked this this whole direction that your your life has taken. Because just knowing you, um, just how positive and everything you are, and so, so animated and everything like that. So I mean, it's it's really a testament to, you know, how much you you know you just you you kind of love what you're doing now, and and uh, just now knowing that whole backstory is is pretty amazing actually that that you can uh, be that you know positive and everything. So, and I can honestly, I mean, as much as I. I wouldn't want to go through all that over again. I can have a, an appreciation for it. It has opened my eyes. It's helped me to grow. And um, I mean, that's what life is all about. We're supposed to, I mean, to me, it's about gaining as much, as much knowledge, as, as much uh, ability as possible. And I'm just, I'm a big, big uh promoter you know read 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 I, I tell the kids read as much as you can you know uh take the time to to just just dream what what you want in life figure out who you are you know what makes you tick um i think that there's so much static and there's so much distractions 
um, with this new age of life that we, I think we don't take enough time for ourselves to even figure out what we're about and uh, what makes us happy, what makes us sad. And uh, I think, I really feel if we get more in tune with ourselves, we can be uh, not just a, a better individuals for a better individual for our families and for our kids uh, and for our loved ones, but also for our, our communities, for our neighborhoods, for our state. Yeah, and and so speaking of you, and you mentioned our state a while for a while. Just so anyone <laughs> that doesn't know, we, we're both in Arizona, and you had mentioned Wallace and Ladmo, which anyone other than us probably doesn't know what the heck we're talking about. Um, so uh, I don't know if we want to want to briefly explain what Wallace and Ladmo was. I don't know if you want to give a shot, because it, it, yeah, I mean it's a huge influence on you, and it, it definitely informed a lot of things that that I do, some of my humor and stuff like that, but. But um, so I don't know if you want to talk about it or. I yeah, mean, yeah. Talk Let's about talk about it. Wallace, uh, the, a gentleman named Wallace had this sh program, a show. It was meant for kids is um, just this little slapstick, you know, put a little uh, skits together and, you know, ha ha ha. And uh, they ended up bringing on a cameraman. Uh, and uh, the cameraman actually was a pretty good uh, actor himself and uh they changed the show to wallace and ladmo that was the ladmo was the camera guy and they made magic for 35 years on our, our local television uh you know channel it, it's just what they did for our community it, it just it was such a so amazing what they did uh, the magic that they brought the the smiles the joy the ladmo bags <laughs> Yeah. And, and so, I mean, so the program was kind of, if I know in different, different places, they've had similar things. Like, I think like Bose of the clown or like, um, I don't, there's, there's different, different things like that. But like I said, this was, or like Sean said, this was like the long, one of the, at one time it was the longest running, um, either children's program. I think maybe Sesame street has or surpassed it now, but, um, but my dad watched it as a kid and I watched it as a kid and um, unfortunately kind of went off the air before I had kids. But, but yeah, it was really, and the thing is it, it wasn't, they, they like never talked down to kids or anything. It was very, it was just a different brand of humor and it was, it was in the, you know, they would show cartoons and everything in between and they would have, they would bring on people, you know, kids onto the show and there'd be like a lucky winner who would get this Ladmo bag. And basically they would, you know, fill it with all kinds of uh, cool stuff from their sponsors and everything. And it was like the Holy grail. If you grew up in Arizona at the, the time that the, the show was airing to get one of these Ladmo bags. And actually my, my brother was one of the very few people that actually got one. Um, so, I mean, and everyone, everyone's jealous of that because I mean, it's, it really is. I mean, if you got a Ladmo bag, I mean, that was the thing. So, but, and, you know, so it was just, it was just a really, really cool thing and a big part of my childhood. So, um, but so you've, you've kind of take, you've taken that and, um, and we'll get a little more into your class, but that's something that you kind of adopted was instead of the Ladmo bag, you created what, a Shawnee Poo bag? Yeah. Shawnee Poo bag. Uh, pretty much, uh, like I said, uh, I, I just, you know, you take, you take a look at the things that meant something to you in life and that's all i've been doing like when you interviewed me at the the, the comic-con um I, I take the things that have inspired me or have you know made me smile and just try to implement it and i looked at what La wallace and ladmo their legacy what they had brought and it's like i feel like there's a void i feel there's a there's a hole that's you know it's missing a piece and that's where it's just like, hey, you know, it, I know how I felt about the Ladmo bag. How would the next generation feel about, say, a Shawnee Poo bag? And then really thinking about it, that's how I was like, okay, well, with my webcomic, uh, Shawnee Poo's going to forget his lunch money. And he's going to look at Fuji the robot and say, all right, Fuji man, I forgot my lunch money. What do you got for me? And so Fuji uh his uh stomach rumbles and uh down comes his uh <laughs> his front little grill and out comes a robotic hand and it's it's holding 
Oh, there it is. <laughs> a Shawnee Poo bag. And uh, I thought, you know, that'd be like a really awesome, cool backstory. You know, it's it's connected to my webcomic. And then when I go into these uh, art classes, I always begin, hi, my name is Sean Sauter. This is what I do. I do a webcomic, always introduce the characters. I and introduce the the shawnee poo bag and then it's time to get to work let's let's learn art and go through the whole class and at the very end of the class i start ending things off and then i get a magical text message uh, from my phone and it's fuji the robot and he lets me know to hand out one of these shawnee poo bags to one of the kids and i tell you it's the kids really like it and it's, it's like this, as much as the kids are getting something out of what I'm trying to bring, oh my gosh, I get so much more from, I just feed off of the energy that the kids bring, the, the joy, most importantly, the, the smiles. I just, I feel like an addict to, to smiles. Um, you know, for not smiling for so long and just feeling so low, like that's what I'm after. I, I just want, if I, before I go, I just want to make this world just a little bit brighter. That that's that's what all this is all about, you know. Just to make it a little bit brighter. So so was that sort of the impetus of how how was it? Did the courses come after the idea to do the shoddy poo bag, or was that something you added to it, or what, how did that? How did you get the idea, or how did you start kind of coming up with how you're going to do these courses and approaching comic book stores or or whatever? However, this came came about. How how did that all how, work out? How it all started was. Anytime, like five years ago, someone would ask me, would you do a, a panel? Would you do a workshop? The first thing out of my mouth was, no, no, I'm too scared. No, no, I'm, I, I can't do that. Uh, I'd have the little gremlin on my shoulder just, no, you can't do that. Oh, my gosh. And then I'd freak out and uh, no progression. But uh, after doing a... A convention where I was brought on by the amazing, amazing man, um, um, Alex Alexander Simmons. He's from back east. He's been putting together this kids comic con for the last twelve years in his in his home state, and he recently decided to branch off and kind of connect it with the bigger comic cons and say, "Hey, you're big comic con." Uh, you should have like a little slice uh, cut out for like a family friendly area where family friendly, you know, families can come through and not have to be subjected to, you know, some of the stuff that we see at Comic-Con, you know, and, and it's kid friendly and bring your family. And uh, so, yeah, I, I got hooked up with this Alex Simmons, amazing man. Again, I can't get over how amazing he is, but he brought his little roadshow uh with him to phoenix and he needed a local artist and uh, one of my art friends uh jan janimal how's it going man uh he put my name out there and i'm, I'm thankful so much for that and and the the power of uh connecting with people and uh yeah that, that was just so cool but that was uh i i started doing the the workshops kind of before that but doing that one right there i was just so scared he, they required me to do a workshop for kids and ah the whole thing about drawing in somebody the whole thing about drawing in front of somebody it's always been that whole thing where i can't go use the ba bathroom if somebody's looking <laughs> it's just the the whole fear thing but i had to get over it i had to gird up my loins and uh jump on stage and after i got done it, it i felt like gene simmons from kiss just getting off of me like, ah! <laughs> like you know it was it was I, like i knew i had something in me but i never knew i had this if that makes any sense and yeah. it just spiraled from there it was just like all right I'm going to do this. I can do this. And uh, I approached uh, 
Ken and Susan from Drawn to Comics, a local comic book store in Glendale, Arizona. And I, they'd all, they had already had approached me many, many times over the years. Hey, you want to do an art class? Or hey, you want to talk about this? I'm like, <laughs> but I finally came up to them and said, hey, I, 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 I can do this. And I, I want to do it. And this is what my vision is. And, and Ken and Susan, they, they ate it up. They, they, they took a chance on me. And we just finished up the last uh, course of the class a couple weeks ago. And I, I tell you, it was fantastic. It, it was, I, I can't, <laughs> words can't describe uh, the feeling of, I started this. I, I did this. And uh, to see the look on all the kids' faces, it, it was just really spectacular. That's, that's awesome. It's, and it's something we've talked about before. I know, I know Josh, who usually hosts the show uh, with me, he, 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 a while back, he just decided, you know, I'm going to start saying yes to more things. And, you know, and from that comes opportunity. And we've got a lot of people out there, especially, you know, on YouTube that, you know, I don't, I don't know if I want to do YouTube or what do I do, or I'm a little, you know, shy about it or whatever. And kind of, I was the same way. And even when we were talking before the show, uh, you had mentioned doing panels and I'm like, well, I said, so were you on like a panel with some other people or did you do it yourself? And he said, well, I did it myself. And then even, even I was like, Ooh, I, I'd have to ease into that. I think I'd have to do a few panels with, with the group first. So, but yeah, I mean, it's just so weird. Sometimes you, you got to kind of face your fears and jump into it. And, and just hearing you talk about how much has changed your life and how much, how much you actually enjoy it when before something that made you fearful, now it's something you want to do. And it's, it's just crazy because it, it, even, you know, as, as artists, a lot of us, most of us, I think, a majority of us, I think, are very introverted, uh, myself included. And then some people say, well, how do you do the YouTube videos and, and do all this stuff? And, you know, it's just constantly kind of pushing yourself out of your comfort zone and um, and you get a little better and a little bolder and you keep going at it. And and, and it, it really does help. So, I mean, if, if, if it's something you think about, even if it's baby steps and sometimes you just got to jump into it. But whatever you do, I mean, I, I really I would really encourage people to just kind of step out of their comfort zone and, and you know. And, you know. Try something, try something new like that, and you might find out you really enjoy it. But the other thing I wanted to talk about was um, just the, this, the whole idea of, you know, getting kids into comics and everything. Um, and not just, and, and a big part of that is, I mean, because I know I've got another friend, Gaz Gretzky, Gazbot. A lot of you guys know he's been on the show many times. Um, but he's, I think he does something similar to you do where he, he has done classes at uh, a comic store, and I don't know. I'm not sure what age group he's teaching, but I would assume some are probably younger kids. I could be wrong, but this seems like a great opportunity for for comic book stores. So if it's something you're thinking about doing, if you've got some skills and you'd like to teach, you think you'd like to teach kids, um, I would imagine most comic book stores would probably be open to that because you're bringing people into the store, and and once again, you you can bring a younger crowd in. And I, I mean, anyone that's not trying to build their, build their audience with younger kids is, I mean, that just seems crazy because, you know, sooner or later we're going to phase out the, the, yeah. older, the older crowd's going to phase out. We need to bring people in. And I know Corey, you kind of, kind of been silent. You might be wanting to jump in, but you did say you had some opinions on this. So um, I'm kind of curious uh, what, what you had to say about that as far as bringing kids into comics and stuff. Did Corey step out? <laughs> he may have stepped out. Well, I'll repeat. I don't. Yeah, I'll repeat it again. Maybe he's got. Oh, sorry. My mic. My mic was muted because I was making a bunch of noise. But are you trying to tell me that I'm going to die, Scott? Is that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm older than both you guys, uh, so I, I, it'll probably be gone before you. I'm sure. But uh, no, I. I <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, here's here's the thing, right? Is if you want to talk about this from a purely um, if you want to talk about this from a purely marketing standpoint, then um, you have a sales funnel and a sales funnel is like a normal, it's a normal thing, right? And the sales funnel is where you uh, are driving new traffic to the products and it starts out, it starts out really wide 
um, just like a normal funnel, and then it goes down. And what happens is you have at a, at a very high level, you reach a lot of people um, with a very minimal engagement, right? And then as you go down and down and down and down, the commitment to that brand, that activity, that, that thought process, whatever it is, becomes more and more and more intense, and there's fewer and fewer people that are willing to commit to that. And if you think about, um, if you think about comics compared to other things, comics are actually a fairly significant commitment um, compared to a lot of entertainment and a lot of media today because uh, you can't read a comic while you're watching TV or driving or doing whatever, whereas a lot of things you can do like a second screening or whatever. You know, I mean, I can, I can play dumb little games on my phone you know, while I'm making dinner and listening to the radio and, you know, but whereas I'm reading a comic, that, that pretty much takes 100% of my attention. And so the commitment level uh, to get to that point is, is actually pretty narrow. Um, and so any industry that has a high commitment level that isn't focused on driving more and more traffic into the top of that funnel, um, you know, is, is kind of in trouble. And then on top of that, the other thing that I was thinking along these lines um, when we were first talking, one of the things that I love about art and I love about um, comics in general um, is that there are a lot of highly specialized skills and industries where there's a culture of um, keeping all the skills close to your vest, right? Um, I was on years ago, a construction crew and a landscaping crew and, and different things like that. And the thing that struck me was super weird that there were all of these guys that have been doing this for years and years and years. And I was raised in an environment where you would help people do stuff. And if you knew how to do something, you'd show them how to do it. And it was awesome. Right. But you get into, and I'm not sure if this is everybody, but from what I've talked to you, it, it's very common um, in, in construction. You get in construction and there's kind of this hazing that goes on. There's kind of this like, well, I'm not going to tell you this thing because then you might take my job. I'm not going to, I'm not going to help you up the ladder because I had to fight, you know, to get to this point. And, and from what I understand, the tattoo industry is very much like that. Um, you know, and as there's this idea of pushing everybody down and out to raise yourself up, I find that to be almost wholly counterintuitive to how life actually works. Um, because I, I'm, I'm much more of a, uh, believer in like a rising tide raises all the boats. Yep. Right. And so if, if I feel like me teaching somebody about, um, you know, how to do a figure drawing or, uh, what ink I use or, you know, a particular technique that really helped me figure out how to do uh, brush and ink or whatever, or a storytelling craft or, or anything like that. Um, I'm not scared that they're going to take my job. I'm not fearful that they're going to, uh, that they're going to like crowd the market out or anything. Uh, quite the contrary. And most artists are like this. We're really excited to have more people that are into this. Um, and knowing that nobody comes into this game and is like instantly good at it. It, it takes, thousands and thousands and thousands of hours um and so there's that aspect and then i'll stop talking here in a minute but the the third thing and i i did a whole video on this thing the idea that the idea that um suppressing knowledge to kind of like hoard power is like actually a very um anti-egalitarian concept so like when you're talking about um, when you're talking about politics or power structures or whatever, um, like the French Revolution is a great example where you had, um, you had two main power structures. You had people who were born royal and you had people who were in the church, right? And so the church and the royalty. Um, it was illegal for a lot of people to read. Like it was outlawed um, to read the Bible, right? Because, because the church was scared that if people started reading – then that would like take power away from the priests. And then the whole system was set up so that nobody could like wake up one morning and be like, I know that for the past like 15 generations, I've been a farmer as a serf to this, uh, this, you know, feudal Lord or whatever, but I think I want to go be a blacksmith. Like that wasn't an option at all. Like whatever you were born as you were. And then 
one of the things that actually caused the French Revolution, which was a huge thing that toppled all of this stuff and actually made it so almost worldwide, everybody gets to choose what they want to do with their life, was the encyclopedia, which I find fascinating because what happened is the encyclopedia was one of the most punk rock revolutionary things that happened in history because what it did was a group of people came out and they said, you know what, I'm, I'm tired of everybody hoarding all this power. This is garbage. And so they started writing articles of how to do all of this secret stuff, right? The only way that you could be a blacksmith before the encyclopedia was to somehow get a blacksmith to take you on as an apprentice. That was it. It was passed on a one-to-one -one ratio. Whereas they go in and they write this book and they're like, all right, we're going to do two things. We're going to teach people how to read. And then we're going to just start doing volume after volume after volume, talking about all kinds of different things. And a lot of it was like how to be a blacksmith, how to shoe a horse, how to do this and how to do that. And here's the history of this country. And here's the history of it. And so it was all of this knowledge and that knowledge and the sharing and dissemination of information and skills actually started to cause people to realize that there was a power disruption. And so, I don't know, everything that, everything that you were talking about just made me kind of think of those three things. But like in comics, the cool thing about it is very rarely, like it'll happen, right? But very rarely is a kid going to walk up to somebody who's, who's at a table or something and be like, oh, dude, that's awesome. Like, can you show me how to do that? And he's going to, you know, very rarely he's going to be like, no, kid. You know, most of the time he's like, yeah, man, grab a, grab a piece of paper and you know, let me, let me like show you how to do it. And so this idea that you're kind of like sending the, send, I, I've heard it called sending the elevator down, you know, like after you get to the top of the building, you know, you, you, you send it down so that everybody else can come up with you um, is, is a really cool concept. But without that, uh, the industry will die. You know, if you don't have new customers and you don't have people growing up uh, with it and, and, and building the same nostalgia that brings you to it or whatever, um, then it'll just go away and there will be, there will be no comics for anyone, you know, and other forms of media have figured this out. Like there's not only rated R movies, there are G movies and there are PG movies and there's not only, um, you know, like super gritty crime noir television. There's, there's also, you know, big fluffy dinosaurs and, you know, little fuzzy felt monsters and stuff. And it's like other forms of media have realized that if you gather people and get them used to that media, then they will stick around and grow with it. Um, and so, yeah, so I don't know. I'm not, I have no point and I'm not really wrapping this up very well, but those are, those are some thoughts. <laughs> well, well, I yeah. agree with Corey. <laughs> That's really cool. I didn't, I never knew that about the encyclopedia, but it makes perfect sense. That That is so cool. But they, yeah, that's, I mean, that's kind of what, what a lot of people on YouTube are doing right now where it's, I mean, a lot of, a lot of this information, you know, before you kind of had to pay to get, you know, and you can still, I mean, you can still do courses and you can, you know, if you want to charge for courses, that's fine. So it's, you know, the thing about YouTube, I mean, what I, what I tell, tell people is all this information is out there. You know, yeah. sometimes it's easier to take a course, even if, if you're going to pay for a course or whatever, because it's kind of presented a little better. You don't have to kind of search around for it and go to all these different channels. So a lot of times it's worth it to like purchase a course or whatever. But if, if you, you know, if that's cost prohibitive or whatever, you can find all, there's, there's not a lick of information that's not out there on the internet somewhere. And I just think that's just so awesome because, and I think another reason why, you know, most artists don't mind sharing this stuff is because they know how hard it was to, you know, <laughs> to have to learn this stuff. A lot of us, if we're, if we're older, to kind of have to learn this stuff as we went or figure out how to learn it before the internet, you know, a, a lot of, you know, it was knocking on doors or like asking professionals or this or that to try to figure out how to do all this stuff. Um, and uh, just, it's just, it's so much better and so much easier nowadays. So, yeah. yeah. But so, yeah. So, you know, based on that and everything, so I, I kind of want to get back into kind of what, what Sean's doing and everything. And, and again, talking about how, you know, it's, it's, if this is something else, because, you know, and I'm sure Sean would agree with this, and it just kind of goes along with Corey's point as far as, you know, Sean hasn't cornered the market on this idea. We talked about Gazbot also doing this as well. But I think, you know, the more the merrier, the more people that in your area, you know, 
if you want to do this, go, why not go approach your local comic book store? Because it's like a win-win for everyone. You know, yeah. you're you're teaching the kids, you're getting younger kids into the. In, anytime you can get people into your store, I mean, that's what they want. They want to they want to bring people into their comic book store for the most part. So, I mean, I would think, you know, in wherever city or whatever you are, if that's something that you have that skill that you can offer, um, yeah, I would say I would definitely say do that and. Um, and I think Sean, I think you should. You said your classes were you had wrapped up your 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 season or your your yes. class, but and then there's demand for more. But um, there's also you know there's also more um, there's also more comic book stores out there. Very very so, true. And when 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 I do my art classes, I, I tell the kids, you know, don't just follow what I do. Look at what everyone else is doing. There, there's more than one way to figure out how to draw, and there's uh, more than one way on writing a book, right? I mean, there, there's so many options, and the, the, the way to get to your end goal is by just learning, taking the time, because I, I really think and feel a lot of us are just caught up in the daily grind, you know, we do the nine to five, we come home, we're burned out. Uh, all we want to do is sit and relax. And th that's that's the pivotal time to pick and choose what you're going to do with that time. Are you going to sit there and watch a, a season on uh, Netflix? Are you going to um, go on to th this uh, face Facebook or something and spend a couple hours on there? Or are you going to take the time and trying to grow grow your ability, grow your craft, uh, grow your knowledge as well. Um, it goes back to even talking about getting kids to read comics. I mean, it's, it's very vital. It, it exposes us to new things. It, it causes uh, self-improvement. Um, it improves our understanding and it helps us to prepare for action also. Um, there's just so many benefits to reading and when I, when I was growing up, I struggled with reading. I, I won't lie. I, I couldn't, if it didn't have pictures, I couldn't read it. And uh, so I was in reading classes. I was the <laughs> yeah, I, it, I just struggled. And it wasn't until my mom started buying me comic books before it finally clicked, before I... I started to develop the imagination in my own head. Like I could now just read words and uh, the pictures coming to me versus needing the, the, the training wheels of, of the comic. And that's why I've got so much love and, and just a passion for, for, for this industry of the comic books, because it brought so much to me. And, and now, uh, I try. I've been reading these Harry Potter books to to my kids at night. I'm on the the seventh book right now. We only have like a few chapters to go, and I just I really encourage not just kids but parents read read as read as much as you can and fit in that bonding time w with your children. Uh, when I read to my kids, I, I try to do the whole voices um, when I read to them. You know, oh Ron, what are you doing? Back away from Hermione. Oh, what do you mean? How is she stuck? You know, <laughs> I, I try to do all of that, and it's it's it all boils down to to the finding those little moments in life, you know, that get you to just look back and like, wow, this is cool. But no, if, if we could, if, I just if kids could just pick up more books and put the devices down, like it's the whole American diet. You know, the American diet is meat, meat, meat. Vegetables are very, very minor. And the diet needs to kind of switch to where we're eating more vegetables and a little bit less meat. I think that's the same way with devices, you know, with these tablets, uh, the phones. Let's put down the devices and let's get real and, you know, get in depth with ourselves, who we are, and, and, and learn and become who we're supposed to be, honestly. I think all of us are meant to be something and it's, it's up to us to discover that. And it's, it's not an easy thing, but if you want to do something, the first thing you gotta do is get up and do it. 
or figure out how. Yeah, and one one thing that you mentioned that I really like is uh, is that we're all supposed to do something, and I feel like <clears throat> one of the one of the things about writing a book or drawing a picture or a comic or an illustration or stickers or whatever any any type of any type of individual creation, um, you know, like you could have fifteen different people draw the same character, and you're going to get fifteen different drawings, different interpretations, is because in the creation process, you are presenting a little bit of yourself, right? And so since each of us are different and we all have different experiences and different challenges and different uh, benefits and, and whatever, um, when we bring something to the paper or the screen, uh, we do that in a very individual way. And and that is that is really, really cool. The problem I find, and I agree with you, is in today's society, um, a lot of what reading and drawing and playing outside and all that, a lot of that is wish fulfillment, right? A lot of that is this idea of um, daydreaming for something bigger or better or different than what you have. And with, com with modern technology, um, I, can, I can get that much easier with much less, less effort. For example, even just reading a comic, like like I've said before, is is more work than watching TV, right? And so I can, and the reason for that is because um, it's they call it kind of like blood in the gutters, um, which is actually an ad adaptation from an old fifth uh, century BCE Greek thing where they didn't have the technology to do special effects, and so when there was a giant battle or something, there would be a guy that would come on and. <laughs> tell you about the battle oh my gosh you know you, you can't believe what just happened over there let me let me tell you about it there is like three thousand people that just got killed or whatever right and it's the same thing in comics like you're not seeing it move and so your imagination has to engage to figure out how this one static picture relates to this next static picture that's right next to it what is the relationship between that well something happened in that gutter something happened in between those two things and what happens in between those two things is actually the story that you are visualizing in your brain, right? And so it's a super active process to do that. Novels are the same way. Uh, and most people are dissatisfied with movie adaptations of novels. And I don't think it's because most movies are bad, but it's because I had a set of expectations of what that dude looked like and sounded like and what she looked like and wore and she acted in my brain a different way than, you know, than that actress is portraying it or whatever. And when I imagined that spaceship as I was reading this book, I thought it would look like this. And then you see it and it looks different or whatever. And so this idea that you have to kind of engage, it's super important and it's really, really powerful um, for young kids to engage um, those types of abilities in their brain. And yet, if I want to, if I want to pretend that I'm Batman, I can actually just pick up a controller and be Batman in Gotham. There are some super bad A video games where if I'm talking wish fulfillment, I can just be the character right there and I can see things as they see it. And so, um, you know, or like I remember as a kid, I would like tie a blanket around my neck and just run around and jump from couch to couch and couch. And nowadays I see like, I have to like pry the electronics out of my kid's hands and be like, please play, you know, like do something like let's go draw or climb a tree or whatever. And they're down with it once they get started doing it, but it's because it's, it's harder. Um, and, and I, this is another thing I've talked about on my YouTube channel, but, um, there's a, there's a modality of thinking called the default mode network. And psych psychologists uh, just put fancy terms on things, but it's basically when you daydream. It happens when you're in a state of restful wakefulness. And this restful wakefulness engages this activity in your brain that's fascinating. It increases your creativity. It also increases your long-term memory, and it increases your empathy to your ability to be able to empathize with other people and it also uh, uh, increases um, your ability to solve complex nonlinear problems which are like most of the problems in life very seldom in life do you have somebody come to you and say 
okay, huge life decision. What's two plus two? And you're like, oh, it's four, right? It's like, no, it's like, okay, huge life decision. Which job do you take? What's your major in college? You know, there are all these nonlinear things. You have no idea how they're going to work. And what happens is if you allow yourself um, to not be entertained for a few minutes every day and to allow yourself your mind to water, wander and your imagination to engage, um, you will actually be more creative. You'll be a friendlier and nicer person. Um, you'll be more empathetic and you'll be able to make problem, you'll be able to solve problems quicker. There's a number of studies that talk about this, but but um, reading, reading and drawing and writing all have types of uh, activities in them where a part of the activity is so horrifically boring that you can do it without thinking, right? And so, and that's when your mind wanders and you come up with all these ideas and everything. And so one of the things that I love about teaching kids art um, is that you get them into this, this manipulation with their hands that doesn't take a huge amount of, of brain activity so their minds can daydream, right? Now, there's a big difference between like, roughing out the layouts of your page, which is a very analytical process versus like after you've got the pencils down uh, and inking that, right? And inking, like I can, my mind goes all over the place or I listen to podcasts or audiobooks or whatever. And I was, I was teaching my daughter's second grade art class this year. Um, and it was so much fun because kids haven't gotten a lot of the bad habits that adults have gotten yet where you're supposed to be embarrassed about specific things or you're supposed to be one way or the other. And we just should ourselves to death. I should be doing this. I should be doing that. And so one day I remember I just, I just, I just brought, I, I literally just found a bunch of stuff in my garage, styrofoam blocks and cardboard and paint and chalk and, and uh, wires and all kinds of things. I just bought this giant box full of stuff. And, and the teacher wasn't too happy because I trashed her, her uh, classroom that day. But I said, all right, today we are going to do multimedia sculpture. And they're like, what's that? And I'm like, it's whatever you want. There are literally no rules. Just don't hurt each other. That's, you know, as long as you're not harming yourself or other people, that's, that's the only boundary. And they came up with the most fascinating stuff. I had, I had girls making purses. I had, I had people carving stuff out of, out of styrofoam and then glue gunning like different pieces of fabric to it to make these weird creatures. And, and it was, it was really interesting. And that is a type of neurological activity at a young age that is completely the antithesis of a video game or a TV show where uh, we call that programs time versus unprogrammed time. Programmed time is where somebody else thinks for you. I'm going to use this music bed and these images to make you feel this way at this moment. Um, and unprogrammed time is where you are the active agent in your life and you take a box of crap in some guy's garage and you make a unicorn out of a bunch of styrofoam and cardboard. You know, that's kind of unprogrammed time. And kids are very, very good at that. Um, and, and, and adults would be actually much better people and there would be a lot less racism and hate and bigotry and horribleness in the world and violence and whatever if people just had more unprogrammed time and were, had the ability to kind of create things and make things uh, rather than constantly fixating on destruction and entertainment. Um, and there's nothing wrong with watching TV or playing video games. But if that's the only thing you do, you're actually missing out on most of what you were put on this earth to do and become. Amen. Very well put. <laughs> Sorry, I said I said I had a few rants, so there's one. Of them. No, no, that's that's all good stuff, Corey, as usual. So I, um, yeah, I don't I don't know what to add. I just add to that. It was just yeah, but um, I do. I, I so I wanted to go back to Sean, kind of because I'm so I'm curious. Um, so w what's the structure of the the kind of class that you that you're you're teaching the kids? How how does it all work, and how do you you go about? about teaching, teaching kids about art and is it, is it mostly just drawing or do you get into comics at all? I mean, I, I, I know it's got to center around comics at least, even if you're just drawing, is that if it's in a comic book store, I'm sure, you know, these kids are probably, you know, it's all around them. So. Yeah. Well, with the, this last uh, 
our class that I did for this summer, uh, we pretty much always start off with uh, the five basic shapes. You know, you've got your triangle, your square, you know, circle, oval, and it's just showing them, all right, we're going to take these these shapes and we're going to build stuff out of them. Let's build a body. Let's build a head. Um, look, you know, it's, it's just to get them used to these are the basic shapes and this is what's going to help us um, develop our roadmap so that we can get to our, our, our final, you know, project or our, our final uh, piece of art. And uh, yeah, uh, the first class we did uh, characters. We, we drew our character, we developed our character. The second class was uh, powers and effects and, you know, items. Uh, the third class was location, setting. And then the final class was uh, making our own, very own uh, comic strip. Awesome. It, 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 it was, go ahead. I was just gonna say, so it does, it is centered around comics and like when you're saying powers and things like that, so superheroes and mm -hmm. comics and yeah. stuff like that. Yes, and then what I try to include is, I I try to sprinkle in these these good moral messages or life lessons um, into the whole workshop. Um, like the first class, I had to stop them when they developed their characters, and I said, "All right, everyone, look around at what you guys have all done. Like, look at this person's. Look at this little guy's. Do you guys notice anything?" Well, every, everyone's drawing is different. Everybody's character is different. You know what I notice? We're all different, right? Get them to think, you know? And then it turns into this thing of accepting each other, accepting each other for who we are. You know, we don't, we, you don't have to be everyone, you know, everyone's friend, but you can still be respectful and accept, you know, a person for, you know, the way that they are, or, you know, uh, uh, what they believe. Um, and, and it's just about sprinkling these good, these good messages um, that I think aren't necessarily being sprinkled into some of these youngsters' lives. And yeah, it's and that, just, it, go ahead. I was going to say that goes back to what Corey was talking about, but yeah, sorry. Sean, yeah. But no, it's 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 just that's what it's really all about. I mean, it's about getting them to be creative. I I really do believe that it's those that are creative that make the new things in life that uh, are, that are so revolutionary. Um, like the iPad, you know, Steve Jobs. You know, it's it's creative people that will make a difference in the world. And I, I just don't want kids to be sucked into devices and uh, that's their only entertainment. And then they grow up to be a young adult and they feel like, well, this is what I've always done. And, you know, it's always playtime first and work. It, eh, eh. No, it's get your work done first. Get work done, get your life in order, get work done. Then comes playtime. Yeah, the thing that I like, that, and I don't know if this is intentional or not, but because um, your character Fuji the robot, like you said, he's kind of cobbled together from a bunch of different devices, <laughs> one of them being an iPad, and not that you want to go take your, actually take your father's iPad and and, and kind of destroy it. But, but I might give kids, it might let them look at the, this thing that they're holding in their hand all the time in a different light, like, oh, there's some imagination. This Maybe this could be something else. Maybe we can create something else out of it. Like you know, maybe an older one that's not working. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Over. But yeah, but something that you see every day and it's like, it doesn't just have to be this one thing. We can, we can create, we can build other things out of it. But I, I yeah, so I, I like that. I like that idea. I, again, I don't know if that was intentional or whatever, but that. Yeah. Uh, and, and if it's not, you know, creating art or anything, I still believe each and every one of us has some type of, uh, creator inside and you know we just have to unleash it even if you don't think you can draw or if you're not good at music or uh if you're not good at playing the piano um you still have something to offer life and who's to say 
you know, you took the time to better yourself that you develop a new way, a new cleaner energy, a, a new way of life that um, can provide for millions of people. I, I mean, I just, uh, being optimistic. <laughs> yeah. So, so I have an, I have an, kind of another question. So you wrapped up your first class, your talk or your first, you know, is this, so was this the first time you ever did this? It was like a summer course, right? Yes, it was a summer course. And it was the first time I did this on my own very first time. And it just, it was, it was magical. It was great. It, it, the, the turnout was very well received. The, the parents liked it. Uh, the, the kids enjoyed it. And uh, the drawn to comics, they're getting more and more requests. Hey, when's, <laughs> when's the next class happening? And uh, it sounds like I should be getting things up and going uh, come in January 2019. Cool. Very cool. So where where do you see this? Do you, do you Have you thought about this? Where do you kind of see this going? Or what would you like to see happen with this in the future? What I'd like to see happen, this is, this is my goal. Um, my goal is, is I want to... I want to make the I want to bring the change that Wallace and Ladmo brought, that that positive, good hometown change that just it, it's just so infection you know infection and just just everyone just gravitates towards it. Uh, I want to get communities more knitted together. I, I want to get us to be more kind, to be more understanding, and if it, if I have to start from the very bottom. You know, that, that's where I've got to go. But I do believe even all of us old dogs, you know, there's there's always something to learn. And the like, I really feel bad for these older people that are, have been at their job for many, many years. And they think life is supposed to stay the same throughout all of life. And unfortunately, that's not it. That's not the case. Life changes. Life evolves. And that job that you've been working for, you know, last 10, 5, 10, 15 years, it might not necessarily always be there. So it's very vital and important to, you know, keep keep learning, to keep on growing as an individual and growing your brain. Yeah, definitely. And so, so I mean, now... <sighs> I know, I know you're, you're obviously just talking to you. I know you're, you're just doing this for the love of it and giving back to the community, but is there, is there any sort of, is, have you been able to monetize this at all? Or is that even in your, your um, no, this is all just, this is all just started. Um, I mean, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel and the light it's just beautiful. It's it's grand. I, I see where I want to go with it. I can see the possibilities. It's at I'm at the infant stage, and so anybody that is seeing me for the very first time, jump on. This is gonna be, it's gonna be a ride. It's gonna be a wonderful ride that I'm prepared to 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 bring more smiles and to bring more light. It's 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 exciting because, I mean. Before Shawnee Poo, I had nothing. All I had was fan art that I did. Um, and that was just what I did for my leisure time, what I enjoyed doing. But after losing my dad, it was like, I, it was my eyes opening up. I need to do something. I, 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 I've got something inside of me that needs to come out and it's positive and I need to share it with the world. And Shawnee Poo just stemmed out of it. It really, it, it's it's kind of like me just wanting to bring back those good '80s TV shows that I just loved. I mean, I, I told you before, if you, you took Calvin and Hobbes and you matched it with Charlie Brown and the Peanuts and mixed in a little bit of the the Simpsons, you've got Shawnee Poo. And I'm just trying to create this. I've got this world inside of me inside my head and it's so <laughs> it's exciting to have a million ideas and uh to be able to have a chance to try to get it out there and hopefully hopefully it's 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 good it's positive 
that it will bring positive and it, it will make positive change towards people. And if anything, maybe just a smile, just a smile. Yeah. Well, and, and the reason why I brought that up was because um, I think I think it's an opportunity for you to reach more people, um, you know, whether you're doing more classes and everything. But I've got like, have you considered um, doing more with your YouTube channel as far as maybe putting some of these courses online? Because I could I could definitely see, you know, it's it, it definitely going and doing the stuff in person is is awesome and it's definitely something you want to do and do more of but i think you could take it a little further and reach more people like if you're like well i'm also on youtube and i've got these little you know maybe just little drawing videos or something on your youtube and i think you've got the perfect personality where you could you could do something like that and i think it would help kind of build this whole thing so that's why i was kind of asking and and also going to bring more and i hate to use the word but exposure bring more exposure to you and then in turn just you know get this whole idea out there even more. So have you thought about, have you thought about any of that? I have considered that. Um, I'm still trying to, you know, I'm trying to do all the work balance and trying to still produce stuff, but then at the same time trying to figure right. out, okay, how, how can I be able to also do this and provide for the family as well? Right. Um, but yeah, it's, it, that's definitely been, been in the the ears I, i've been thinking about that and i do see that not every child is going to have the ability to come out to draw in the comics uh, on say a saturday or any comic book store for that matter um to do art classes and what if uh we'd be able to sit there and put some type of art course or whatever online and maybe if it's free it's it's, it's free uh but also maybe put some type of uh note in there for any type of parent hey if if you like what you're seeing if this is uh if this is close to what you believe in um if you want to help it out you know patreon or whatever you know patreon's another thing i need to <laughs> dip my toes into yeah i i keep saying yeah, that's on my <laughs> list of things to do too but but yeah no i just think it can be i think it can be kind of a cool thing especially you know, um, and again, we're talking we're talking about getting younger kids into comics because that crowd skews. I mean, your your crowd is younger, and YouTube skews, skews younger. Um, I think I think that would be a, a perfect uh, you know kind of direction to 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 take this and get you know get people familiar with Shawnee Poo, the comic strip, and everything like that. And it wouldn't even have to be. I mean, you could just start off. It wouldn't have to be like these intense courses like the the kind you're teaching but just like here how to draw this you know yeah. or how to draw that or even if it's drawing fan art and kind of your and if anyone hasn't seen sean's style it's very cool very cute very fun but even your like your fan art characters are very cute and everything so even how to draw the incredible hulk is you know in a, this cute chibi incredible hulk or whatever so um i don't know i just i i just see a lot of potential there so uh, and definitely I, a route that I want to take. I, I've, yeah. I've been using an iPad Pro, and they have that Procreate application. And the ability to sit there and just, um, what is it? out? What is it? It, it? it copies every brush stroke that you do, and then you can export it into an actual video. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so, it's so amazing. It is. And what you're saying, uh, that's what I like to do is, do something like that where I export something that I draw and then maybe do a voiceover and um, bring some of those uh, positive things that I want to sprinkle in, bring it into the, into the video and also, you know, talk about the process. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've done, I've done exactly that a number of times. Um, do uh use, there's a video editor that isn't very expensive called Luma fusion. Yes, I got that. Oh yeah, I mean, Luma Fusion Plus, either Procreate or you know Autodesk Sketchbook or or one of those things, is is just a phenomenal resource for that. Um, but yeah, that that's I mean that is a great idea. I know we're I know we're uh, kind of drifting a little bit, but what Scott's saying, I mean, there's a huge thing. My daughter and I do a big uh, we do a big thing called Pencil Power. It's not big, but she loves it where she just watches these drawing videos. She's about eight and she'll just get on YouTube and just, you know, there's just like, you know, 
a guy on there and he's like, hey, today we're going to learn how to draw this or whatever and that kind of thing. But if you think about think about Bob Ross, right? He a little bit more national, international reach than, than the local guys. But there are so many people that grew up with Bob Ross that are not oil painters but love that guy. Because that's that's one thing I noticed this year teaching those second graders is kind of what you were saying as well, is while you're teaching art and creation, um, it is such a natural segue into really good life lessons. Like, I don't even know how many times I would go around the room and just say, you know, hey, you know, we're all drawing the same thing, but you know, like, look at how different everybody's is. Isn't this cool that we're all different? And, and if you just remember that at this stage, this is sketching. And so you're making mistakes on purpose, you know, like that's part of the process. And that's just whenever you fail at something, you can just erase it or overcome it or get a new paper out those type of lessons. And like, if you watch Bob Ross now in your thirties, forties, fifties or whatever, everything that guy said was like that. And, and we kind of joke about it like that now, but I mean, he was teaching this like wet on wet oil painting technique, but really he's teaching kids like how to navigate the world, you know, like how to be a good person and how to overcome adversity and how to, how to take things that didn't go as you planned and adapt them into something that works for you and still create something beautiful and all that stuff. It was really fascinating kind of kind of thing and you were mentioning you know like teaching these kids and doing that in um it's great person to person one-on-one -on -one or or in a classroom setting those are phenomenal but but i really also think that there's there is a big market that's kind of emerging on youtube and there's actually been studies done where people are watching less and less programmed tv and more and more user-generated content where the users like you and I and uh, you know the videos that we're making are being watched in higher proportions than like the network television shows are. Um, that that's starting to shift. It's starting to drift. It's a really interesting movement. And so I think I think you you have the potential to do really well on, in an environment like that. Um, and it's the cool thing is is it's an exceptionally simple setup. You know, as long as you have something to say, and you've got something to show. That's that's all you need. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was gonna say I, I I get from time to time I get comments because like people that just first turned into my my channel and they they kind of see the the backdrop and everything like that and they like oh this reminds and there's a couple of shows that and some of them were on PBS I think there was I think one was Imagination Station and I'm trying to remember it was Mark I want to say Kessler but I could be wrong um, but he had a couple different shows. Um, what was the other one? Something town or something city. And then there's another one, I think, was it a Canadian show? I'm not sure, but, but there's a couple of these shows that were on in the eighties and the, in the, the nineties where it was just sort of the, you know, this kind of cool host teaching basically, you know, just basic how to draw things. And it was kind of set up really fun. I wish I can remember what the other one was. Somebody will maybe remind me. Um, but um and that's something even when i was first trying to decide what i wanted to do with my channel i was thinking of maybe skewing it a little younger and like just do how to draw and i'd like to do that i still kind of like to do that if i could but i'm just afraid that you know those two audiences aren't gonna you know sync up well because um where i where i would like to do some of that more kind of fun more just teaching kids how to how to do it i've kind of built this base around, you know, more like how to kind of, you know, try to learn how to be a professional artist and stuff. So, you know, I'm kind of, but I think Sean, I think you're in a, a definitely a more position to kind of go over that younger audience and, and, and kind of teach how to draw and everything and kind of, you know, build a, build a brand around that and in turn, you know, reach more people. So reach more, reach more kids. So I think that's pretty awesome. Yeah, what I'd ultimately love to do is uh, get into the school system and become yeah. a motivational speaker and just get these kids, just get them to believing in themselves. That's ultimately, that's the goal. Get them to believe. Um, I just, it's that whole thing of, I don't want them to step in the same potholes that I did. But even with you, Scott, dude, I encourage you, man, test it out. If you've got an idea, test it out what's the only thing that that that's bad that's going to happen is 
if it doesn't work out, but you just found out uh, something that you, you don't, it, it didn't work. And uh, I think that's how we all grow really is by failing. I mean, I now look at failure as, you know what, this is, that's, it's a time for me to grow. And yeah. Yeah, and Scott, you could you could you could take that two ways because I, I think I understand your hesitation because I have I have a problem on my channel where I have kind of two different things that I'm doing and I think it's actually hurting my channel because one thing that I'm doing is I do software tutorials right and I, I it's like straight up here's all the keystrokes that you need to be able to learn After Effects you know here's all the things in Illustrator is very very straight, very, you know, nobody even knows who I am after that. And I get a ton of my traffic to my, to my channel through that kind of avenue. And then the other avenue is more of kind of what we were just talking about, where it's like, I'm going to draw something and talk about, you know, I don't know, the French Revolution, <laughs> you know, whatever, you know, whatever's on my mind at the time as I talk about different things. Um, and they're so different that I wonder if it is hurting. But I have seen, I have seen creators start, start a second channel uh, and they'll cross promote the channel um, mm -hmm. but, then you, but then you're able to kind of focus and niche down and and I have I have a different channel for the one with my daughter um, it's not that big of a deal to sign in and sign out and that's about it that's that's the only difference once yeah you and I, I, I thought about that there's uh, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, it, uh, is it James is it Riaz the the box office artist Oh, yeah, yeah. His videos? Mm -hmm. So yeah, because I think he does, I think he did some kind of separate thing where he was doing like stuff for kids too. Um, cool. But I don't know, because originally when I was, when I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do, I mean, I wanted to have like puppets and things like that. And I still, if I ever got to the point where I could kind of do this full time, I would like to integrate some of that. But I think I could, I don't know, I, I think I could still kind of because, I mean, I don't cuss or anything on my channel or anything like that. So, I mean, I think I could still just do, like, basic stuff. Because even adults can learn, like, basic art skills. If I can, you know, mm -hmm. make it fun and everything and sort of like a, you know, sort of a mystery science theater thing as far as the puppets and everything. But I think kids might dig that, too. And I think there's a way to do both in the same channel, but I would have to kind of work on that but but that's just something that's always in the back of my head but i i, I do think if i was actually going to do like really really basic stuff like you know um and maybe even like if my you know i don't know my daughter's probably not going to be into that anymore because she, <laughs> she's in eighth grade now so <laughs> but oh, yeah, but it would be fun i've seen channels where they've got uh, like a a father and son or father and daughter or mother and son daughter whatever combination but where they kind of have a video and they do stuff together, art projects and stuff too. So, so I don't know. I mean, it's, it's something to think about though, but, but yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I don't know. I mean, we're kind of rounding, I think we're getting close to the hour and a half. So I don't know if there's anything else um, that we wanted to tack on to this or anything else you wanted, anyone wanted to mention before we kind of go around and again, repeat and let everyone know where they can find us and stuff. Anything else anyone wants to add? Uh, I'll I'll just add I'll just add one more thing, um, just to kind of a little testimonial of everything we've been talking about. Um, I I had always found myself in different jobs, um, not not like in a weird way, but you know, trying to teach people stuff. Like I've always like gone out of my way to like if I knew something that I think could help somebody else, I'd be like, hey, I could show you how to do that, and you know that type of thing. And it's it that that is that is fulfilling or whatever. But I started teaching, and teaching is an interesting thing because you just semester after semester after semester have all of these people, kind of at whatever age group you teach, because I'm teaching on the university level, that will come back to you uh, a few months later or years later and say, hey, you know that thing that you showed me? Uh, that was amazing. It's changed my life and blah, blah, blah. And like that just happened literally – um, 10 minutes before we went live on the show, I was talking to um, a, a student of mine who like got a job in New York and is making a living doing something that I showed him how to do one day. And, and he's taken it to like a whole nother level and is way better at me than way better at it than I am even now because he really niched down on that thing. 
Um, and it, it was, it was just like one, you know, kind of like 30 minute lesson that I did one day. It, there, if you haven't, if you haven't reached out to teach somebody something like that and had that experience, you're really missing out. And so I, I really would kind of second, like if there is a drawing group or an elementary school or whatever, um, schools all over the place are looking for volunteers. Um, and so if you can take like an hour off on a Friday every other week or something to like go be the, you know, I was on the email list all year as the art mom. I would get all these emails that would say, dear art moms. And I, I always thought that was hilarious because, you know, obviously I'm not a mom. But uh, <laughs> but I mean, um, it was like this weird anomaly to have a guy on campus that, that was willing to do that. Um, and it was so fulfilling. I mean, I remember, and I will just, this is, this is almost a little bit more vulnerable than I like being, but like at the end of, at the end of the year, when I was, when I was, um, kind of wrapping things up and telling them like, Hey, you can draw all summer and you know, whatever. And if you see me around, cause it's a really small town, like say, hi, I'd love to see what you're working on and blah, blah, blah. This kid, like in the middle of me talking, just yelled like, I love you, you know? And then immediately looked super embarrassed, like, oh, crap, I just said that out loud in front, you know, I'm eight years old. And I just said that in front of all my friends, you know, and I just said, I love you too, man. You know, I love all of you guys. I tried to like save them or whatever, but like, yeah. there's like a genuine uh, connection that you can make and a huge impact that you can have on people's lives um, through very, very little effort. And so anybody who's watching this that hasn't tried to do something like that, go to your library, go to your elementary schools, go, go to the local art museum, go to the comic shop or anywhere and just say, Hey, I'd like to set something like this up. I guarantee that you're, you will massively enrich your life because it is an amazing experience. Yeah. And I noticed that just from like comments on YouTube that, you know, when people reach out and they tell me how much they help me or, oh, I was just thinking about this. This video came up at the perfect time. I needed to hear this. Uh, and that just, it makes it all worthwhile, you know? I mean, yeah. it's, it really does. So, I mean, because that's the biggest, th to me, the biggest thing is, um, you know, I'd like to leave some sort of legacy or at least like, you know, impart something on somebody that they can in turn, you know, teach somebody else or, or something that's just going to kind of live on, you know, after I'm gone. So, I mean, right. but yeah, so I don't know, Sean, yeah. what do you, what do you think? Uh, I mean, that's what I'm, I'm trying to do. Just leave, leave the world a little bit brighter. I yeah. mean, I mean, when, when I'm done, I just want to have that, the weight i don't know why i've got the weight on me you know the weight of i need to do something better but it, it's this overwhelming feeling that I, i've got to do something and uh I, I know what it is it's it's to to bring more joy you know and, and also just i really want kids to just just believe in themselves just to keep dreaming to keep learning so they can obtain their dreams and then, I mean, I keep on saying this, but most importantly, smiling along the way, because ultimately the smiles are going to help us get through each and every day. I'm being positive and, and bringing light, you know? No, oh, that's awesome. So, so we'll, we'll go back kind of around and we'll let everyone know where to find us. So, uh, Corey filling in for Josh today. Again, I, I really appreciate coming on last minute like this and everything. So yeah, yeah, it worked out uh, in my schedule really well. So awesome. So where can everyone find you, Corey? Yeah, um, you can find me at CoreyKerr.com. Um, C-O-R-Y-K-E-R-R.com. Also, if you are anywhere near uh, the Utah, Idaho, Colorado area and are, are going to go to Salt Lake Comic Con, uh, which I think they're calling Fanex or Fan Expo now, um, September 6th through the 8th, uh, I believe are the dates. Um, I'm going to be there, and I would really like to not sit at my table for three days and not talk to anybody. So if you're going to be there and you've seen me on YouTube or whatever, like I'll give you something for free. Just just come up and say hi and, and, and do that. Um, and if you want to know like what I'm doing and, and, and all of that, 
Um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Get up, get follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And uh, and if you ever need any help with anything um, that you've seen me do or think I might know, uh, just reach out and I'll, I'll see what I can do because I'm all about that. So. Awesome. Okay. And Sean, where can everyone find you online and anything you want to pitch or let people know about it? Of course. Yeah. You can find me on my main website, seansodder.com. I'm all over the other social media sites. Uh, you can <clears throat> also, I've got a, uh, a promotion going on for my web store. It's a 15% off uh, promo. Uh, if you use AUG 2018, um, they'll receive 15% off. And uh, lastly, if any, any teacher, principal, anyone would like for me to come out to their, their school or, or, or event, you know, contact me at seansodder at gmail.com. I mean, this is where I want to go with life. And uh, yeah, I'm just super, super excited. Awesome. That's great. Uh, and, and the links will be in the description. I'll have to remember to go and put Corey's name in too because josh is there now <laughs> but uh <laughs> so yeah those links are in there um and definitely check out do check out sean's store because he's got all kinds of, his, his style is really cool really fun and everything so you definitely want to check that out um and, it, and, and tell you what scott um if if you like um if people go ahead and make a comment and come over and uh like my my page or whatever we could do a giveaway for uh for this, uh, mail awesome. it out to, to somebody. So go ahead and leave a comment in uh, this YouTube channel and uh, also come over and subscribe. Yeah, awesome. Do They do that. Well, thanks, Sean. I appreciate that. That's awesome. And Aquaman's coming out soon, so good tie-in. <laughs> Nobody wants to be Aquaman. He was loud. <laughs> I always liked Aquaman. Oh, I know. <laughs> Uh, okay, so as far excuse me, I gotta get a drink here. Hold on one second. All right, so as far as me, um, you're on my channel, so you know where to find me there on YouTube. Um, I'm also at circworks.com. You can also go to madsciencesupplycompany.com. That'll take you to my store. And um, and yeah, also just to let you guys know um, the way this works, uh, art casters. Uh, we do it every week. Uh, it's usually me and Josh and a third chair guest. And then, uh, and like today, uh, Corey was really helpful in coming on last minute, filling in Josh's shoes. But we have Corey. Corey's kind of like our unofficial third host. He's always, he's always, he seems like he's always helping us out, filling in when we need somebody. So I appreciate it's, that again. It's, help, it's helpful to not have anybody expect anything out of you in the evening. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> So, so yeah, but the way this, so this basically it switches back and forth from uh, Josh's and my channel week to week. Um, and sometimes it's on a different day. It's usually around nine o'clock uh, Pacific time. Um, but if you want to know when and where we're going to be on, because it does fluctuate, you can join our mailing list. Uh, there is a link in the description of this video. We don't spam you or anything. We just usually 30 minutes ahead of time. We try to send out the invite uh, just so you know, and we'll give you the link to where it's going to be. So um, having said that, I also want to thank everyone in the chat. Um, I, I, we didn't kind of refer to the chat most uh, that much, but I think it, I don't think there was any like major questions, but it was cool that you guys were kind of talking and, and, and I know – Corey and looks like Sean, you guys both kind of chimed in there in the chat and help help answer some of those questions and stuff. <laughs> Kept the conversation going, so I appreciate that. The main, um, the main thing that came out of the chat was that I was wrong about the tattoo industry because if you share too much information, people get hepatitis. Oh well, that that makes sense. Yeah. So well, I mean, I still think there's because. Yeah, well, I don't want to get, we're wrapping up, but yeah. Anyway, so uh, again, thanks everyone in the chat. Thanks everyone watching on the replay and everything. Uh, thanks to Sean and Corey for, for coming on and uh, we will see you guys next week and hopefully, uh, hopefully Josh will be back with us. And uh, so uh, see you guys later. See ya. See you guys.